If you recall the statically indeterminate members from the statics course, these are the members with more unknowns than the number of available equilibrium equations. Therefore, they couldn't be solved in the statics course. However, don't forget, in statics course, we assumed that all members are rigid. In other words, they were not allowed to deform. But now in this course, we're going to learn how to use the information about the deformation of the member to help solve these members. But first, let's introduce the principle of superposition. For example, for this member subjected to axial force F1, causing it to elongate, let's say the displacement is delta 1. For the same member subjected to a different axial force F2, let's say the displacement this time is delta 2. Then, for the same member subjected to a force that equals to F1 plus F2, the deformation can be assumed to be delta equals to delta 1 plus delta 2, and this is the principle of superposition. In this course, unless otherwise specified, we would always assume principle of superposition. However, please keep in mind that this principle only applies when the load and the deformation has a linear relation, and also it does not apply to situations when the deformation is so significant that it changes the geometry of this member. Let's look at this example. For this uniform solid shaft, both of its ends, A and C, are fixed, and it is subjected to an applied force at point B of 8 kN plus 8 kN, and we need to determine the support reactions at the supports A and C. So based on what we've learned in the statics course, we will first draw the free body diagram of this solid shaft put it in an established XY coordinate system, draw the unknown external support forces at point A and point C, and we would write our equilibrium equations. However, even though this is a 2D static problem, we can only write one equilibrium equations, which is the resultant force along the X direction equals to FA plus 16 kilonewton plus FC equals to zero. The reason is because we cannot write a force equilibrium equation along the y direction because there is no force along the y direction. And also, all these three forces are collinear. Therefore, there's no moment equilibrium equation. So here's the issue. We have only one equation, but we have two unknowns, Fa and Fc. We learned in statics course that we couldn't solve this type of problem because this is a statically indeterminate member. However, here, in the mechanics of materials course, we have one more condition that we can use. Because this shaft has both ends fixed, therefore, it is not allowed to deform. Therefore, the total deformation or the displacement of end C relative to end A, delta C relative to A, must be zero. And this is known as the compatibility condition. And this will provide us with an additional equation that will help us solve the two unknowns. So if you recall, the general equation to determine the displacement delta C relative to A is the integration from point A to point C of N, which is the internal normal force as a function of position, over A, which is the cross-sectional area, and E, which is the Young's modulus. But in this case, since we can tell that the shaft is divided into two segments, AB and BC, and within each segment, the internal normal force, cross-sectional area, and Young's modulus are all constants. Therefore, this equation becomes the summation of NL over AE. In this case, the internal normal force within the AB segment times the length of the AB segment over area and Young's modulus plus the internal normal force of the BC segment times the length of the BC segment over A and E. So now we need to determine the internal normal forces NAB and MBC. We're going to use method of sections again twice. First time, anywhere between A and B. So we draw the free body diagram of the left segment write the internal normal force NAB, write equilibrium equation along the x direction, and get the internal normal force NAB, 
within the segment AB equals to negative FA. Then we do the method of section again. Section anywhere between point B and C. Take the left hand side, draw the free body diagram, draw the internal normal force and BC, write the equilibrium equation, and solve for MBC as an expression of FA, which is negative FA minus 16 kilonewton. So let's go back to this equation for the displacement, because now we know that NAB is negative FA and MBC is negative FA minus 16 kilonewton. LAB is 2 meter and LBC is 1 meter. AE are constants. Therefore, fill in the information and set this to be 0. We get our second equation, which is 3FA plus 16 kilonewton equals to 0. And now we have two equations. The first equation is from the equilibrium condition and the second equation is from the compatibility condition that the total displacement in this case must be zero. Therefore, two equations, two unknowns, we can solve for both unknowns, and these are our answers. Negative signs indicate that the direction of the forces are opposite to what I assumed. Therefore, they should look like this. Keep in mind that for different problems, the compatibility conditions will be different as well. So it is your job to write the appropriate compatibility condition. So let's look at a different type of problem. Here we have three rods, A, D, B, E, and C, F. They are made of the same material and are of the same original dimension. In other words, they have the same length, cross-sectional area, and Young's modulus. They are connected to a rigid body, D, E, F, this rigid body is not allowed to deform. Uh, it is subjected to a applied force of one kilopounds, and we need to determine the force developed in each of the rods for equilibrium. Now let's follow what we've learned in the statics course by starting with drawing the free body diagram of the member DEF, showing all the unknown forces FAD, FBE, and FCF. And now we want to write the equilibrium conditions. However, although this is a 2D static problem, we can only write two equilibrium equations. The reason is because we do not have any force along the x direction, therefore there's no force equilibrium along the x direction. So what I write here is resultant force along the y direction equals to zero, and the resultant moment about point E is zero. A common mistake would be some students would try to generate more equation by summarizing the moment about a different point. It is true that you can summarize the moment about any point you want, and therefore you can write infinite numbers of um, moment equilibrium equation. However, they will not be independent equation, and they will not help you solve for your unknowns. In this case, we can only write two independent equilibrium equations. And that's not enough to solve our unknowns. We have three unknowns. Therefore, this is again a statically indeterminate problem. However, now we can write a compatibility condition to generate a third equation. The question is, how do we find this compatibility condition? So we can imagine how this system is going to deform under the applied force. Because the rigid body, DEF, is not allowed to deform. Only the rods A, D, B, E, and C, F are going to elongate, and also the points D prime, E prime, and F prime, they must fall on the same line again. Therefore, the deformation in each of the rods, delta A, D, delta B, E, and delta C, F, they have to be related through this geometry that they form these two similar triangles. And if we zoom in on these two similar triangles, this side here is delta BE minus delta AD, and this side here is delta CF minus delta AD. And because these are the sides of the two similar triangles, the ratio between them must be 2 over 2 plus 3, which is 2 over 5. And this is our compatibility condition. And because for each rod, its displacement equals to NL over AE, 
n is the internal normal force. However, through a very quick method of sections and uh, equilibrium analysis, we can tell that in this case, the internal force does equal to the external force F. Therefore, the compatibility condition becomes this. And because the three rods have the same length, cross-sectional area, and Young's modulus, so in this problem, these three can be canceled out from this equation. Therefore, our compatibility condition becomes that the force BE minus force AD over force CF minus force AD equals to 2 over 5. So now we have three equations, two from equilibrium conditions, one from compatibility condition, and we have three unknowns, FAD, FBE, and FCF, three equations, three unknowns. We can solve for all of them, and that's the answer.